All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, the very next session. We have today Paul Finwick, who is best known as Paul Finwick. <laughs> Paul is an internationally acclaimed public speaker, developer, and science educator. He is best, he's well known for presenting on a diverse range of topics, including privacy, neuroscience, and neuroethics, Klingon programming, <laughs> open source, depression, and mental health, advancements in science, diversity, autonomous agents, and Minesweeper automation. And Pearl. And Pearl. Guess his, what you're getting today. His dynamic presentation style and quirky humor has delighted audiences worldwide. Paul was awarded the 2013 O'Reilly Open Source Award, the 2010 White Campbell Award, both for outstanding contributions to the open source community. As a freedom-loving scientist, Paul's goal is to learn everything that he can, do amazing things with that knowledge, and give them away for free. Please give him a warm welcome. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> so thank you so much, Josh. Now that Josh has told you uh, hopefully how wonderful I am, I'm going to completely ruin all of your impressions of me by doing this. You're welcome, Icon. <laughs> So much PyCon. I know it's hard to believe I've never been formally trained in singing. That's, that's just natural ability which I had right there. Um, so today I'm talking about building the National Rick Astley Hotline and because some of you I know will want to be calling this during or soon after the talk, um, those are the numbers. As you can see, as we provisioned more lines, we got better and better at uh, picking numbers for it. Uh, those are the numbers which you can actually dial which are useful to people. Um, these will also be posted at the end of the talk along with uh, links to the GitHub repository so that you can immediately deploy your own hotline if you want to. So. Um, uh, what was the Rick Astley Hotline, or what is the Rick Astley Hotline? Well, it started off as a toy. Um, it started off with me uh, working out how do I use this voice over IP stuff, and it was essentially my hello world of VoIP. It was like, okay, I call this number, it needs to do something. The equivalent of the hello world is it plays a, a, a song, or it plays a sound file. Um, so I set this up uh, pretty much for my own testing purposes, um, but it now receives more, receives more than 1,000 calls per month. <laughs> So, so this is a Hello World service which has seriously got out of hand. Um, it is run as a public good service, so I fund this out of my own pocket. It costs um, a little bit more than 200 US dollars a year now because it's gotten uh, like popular, so people keep calling it. Um, but it is absolutely, totally worth it. I bump into people and they're like, oh my goodness, you made the Rick Astley hotline. Um, I use that at work. I use that in part of my security information. Um, I use that when filling in forms. Please use this when filling in forms. It's exactly what it's there for. Um, you'll occasionally find it like <laughs> on the street. <laughs> and, and at this point, you might be thinking, how is this even a talk? Like, why did PyCon even accept this if it's just a hello world that people use? The reason it's a talk is because I'm going to show you how to build an interactive voice over IP system from scratch. And one of the fantastic things about this is that I'm not a Python developer. I am an absolute noob at every piece of technology involved in this. When I was setting this up, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and that means I've hit all those noobish mistakes that you hit when you're doing these things. So you can hopefully learn from those mistakes. Um, it's really nice when someone's trying something for the first time, they hit the things you might not otherwise expect. 
So the Rick Astley hotline sits on top of a, uh, a platform called Twilio. Some of you may have heard of Twilio. They do a whole bunch of things now, but I got into them because they offered voice over IP as a service. Um, you can go to their website and you can provision phone numbers. So if you want something which kind of looks like an Australian mobile number, they're a bit expensive. They're about $6 a month. Um, but if you want to get something which is outside of Australia, like a US number, they're like a dollar per month or, or less in some cases. So it's very, very inexpensive to set up one of these numbers. And the first thing I did when I grabbed one of these numbers is it's like, okay, I want to be able to send and receive SMS messages. This was my original purpose. Um, if I had a machine that was having problems, I wanted it to be able to text me. Um, so the way in which you do that, hopefully we're not afraid of code here, um, pretty much you create yourself uh, an SMS send object um, in Perl, because I'm a Perl programmer. Um, you give it some information, you say send this, and, and away you go. But the API is practically the same uh, in Python, in JavaScript, in Ruby, in whatever language you might be programming in. Um, so this is very, very straightforward, and I was using this mostly for alerts and, and other things. Um, it also makes it easy to make and receive calls, but of course, that requires a little bit more work because unlike sending an SMS where you're asking the server to do something, the server's got this incoming call that needs to figure out how to handle that. Um, the way in which you do that is if you're using the Twilio console, um, it gives you a whole bunch of things you can work with and it says, hey, when a voice comes in, here is a webhook, you give it a URL. And what it expects to come back is this thing called Twimmel, which is a flavor of XML. And um, it looks a little bit like this. So this is simply saying the response when you call this number is to play this MP3, bell, uh, this MP3 file. So it plays a cowbell, which is pretty cool, but eventually it stops. So you can say, well, please play the cowbell 10 times so you can like properly dance and everything. So version one of the Rick Astley hotline was me simply changing that URL to a copy of Rick Astley's greatest song. So that was it. That was my basic hello world. Um, and this was enough for me to do another important thing, which is make outbound calls. Um, so one thing that you may have noticed um, if, you're, if you're Tom in the front row here, <laughs> is that if you ever post something to social media saying, oh, hey, I'm traveling, this is my new phone number if you need to call me, <laughs> and, and I see that you've posted that in the last half an hour, so you're probably still awake, I will run this code so that you can enjoy some wonderful Rick Astley. Um, <laughs> What that looks like, again, this is a, a snippet of Perl code. Um, it's very, very straightforward. You fill in some credentials. You have a lucky person. Um, and then we simply say, hey, I want to call from this number to this number. And you provide a URL, which again is going to provide that snippet of, of Twimmel, which says what it's going to do. Um, so that was, that was version one. Just to demonstrate, because I want to pepper this uh, entire experience with live demonstrations. Um, just to demonstrate, I have a, um, uh, a, a program which does that. Uh, so I've got Rickroll, and I can put in someone's number. Normally, I would do that, but we're being taped. I don't want the entire world to have your phone number. So instead, I'm going to type RickMe, um, which calls me. And oh, you've all got my phone number now anyway, because it will be in that <laughs> response. But you can see here that I'm now being called by Rick Astley, who I've got on speed dial. And if I were to answer that, I end up with this fantastic music. Thanks to the internet, you've probably heard that before, so I might keep playing it. So that was version one. Version one, oops, let me pop back to here. So that was version one. Um, it was simply a static piece of Twimmel with a couple of pieces of code. And um, it sort of rolled around to April 1st, and I realized that this was sort of our peak operating time every year was April 1st. And I'm like, wouldn't it be great if we could improve this, wouldn't it be great? Instead of just having one song, you could have interactive menus. So rather than just listening to that original, you can listen to remixes. And because there are some amazing remixes out there of, of Never Gonna Give You Up. Um, so being a Perl developer, I initially uh, developed that in Perl Dancer, which is the equivalent of Flask uh, for anyone in the audience who knows Python. And um, there, was, there was one downside at the end of this. Um, this required me to have a server to run that application on. And um, the result was everything was running on a single server. It was a micro EC2 instance on Amazon. Um, it had a whole bunch of other things running at the same time. And occasionally, it would go down. Now, Twilio is nice. It will email you if you've, been, if you've received an error, if something's gone wrong. Um, but by this stage, it had started to be popular. This is a, a graph of the number of seconds of joy delivered per month by the Rick Astley hotline. 
And, and most people, the average call is about five seconds long. People realize they're being rickrolled and they hang up. So, so to get whatever I've got there, 70,000 seconds of joy being delivered is, is pretty good. Um, over the last 30 days, we've had more than 1,000 inbound calls. Um, but the problem is, if you're running the Rick Astley hotline and there is an interruption of service, Twitter lets you know. <laughs> Damn it, Paul, you said you were no, never going to give us up. Yeah, you've really let us down. And this thread keeps on going. It just, it just keeps on going. And, and it wouldn't be isolated. Any time we had any service interruption at all, just Twitter would just rickroll me continuously. And, and just for the record, I'm sick of being rickrolled. Please stop it. Please, please stop it. This is a service I, I have for other people. So version two. Version two is like, I really don't want this to ever go down. I really don't want to be maintained. Thank you. I, I really don't want this to go down. I really don't want to be maintaining machines. Um, I want this to like, be able to scale to however many calls come in. And of course, we know that when you want to make something scalable and reliable, you just add more cloud to it. And, um, and so that's what I did. Um, I used a service called uh, Amazon Lambda, AWS Lambda. And the idea of Lambdas is that you have code that runs on demand. So rather than having here as a container or here's a virtual machine, um, it's just like, oh, this has come in. We'll spin up this little micro instance just for the duration of that. Um, it's serverless. Um, I've spoken to the people at Amazon. They do actually have real machines sort of behind the curtain running this. Um, but the idea is you write an application, you give it to Lambda, it runs as needed, and they claim it has a 40 millisecond life cycle. So from spin up to tear down, that takes 40 milliseconds overall. Um, and you know, so you're not paying very much for that. It's very, very responsive. Certainly responsive enough for telephone calls. Why did I choose to go with Lambda? Um, well, one reason is they give you a million free requests per month. So every time someone makes a, a phone call into the Rick Astley hotline or they press a button, that uses up a request. I'm never going to hit a million of those in a month. Um, if I do, I pay, I don't even know what that is, nanocents, picocents, like per request thereafter. Um, they also, of course, charge you on compute time, so you don't just spin up a Bitcoin miner or something. They give you 400,000 gigabyte seconds of free compute time per month, um, which I figured out if I'm using a, a half gig of RAM is about 9.25 days of computation time. Um, I would need to have $6,000 worth of call costs per month before I start paying for the CPU costs. So I'm essentially bankrupted um, before this kicks in, which means it's, for me it's essentially free. Um, but is it easy? Is it easy to set up AWS Lambda? So I was like, oh, yeah, this sounds like a great technology. Let me grab the documentation. And is there a quick start guide? There is. Starting on page 170 <laughs> of the AWS Lambda documentation is the quick start guide, which is 14 pages long. Everything before that is background reading that you need to know in order to quick start. And, and if you've ever had a conversation with me, you know that I have no attention span whatsoever. There is no way that I could possibly do that. And it involves API gateways and IAM services and something with S3, and I don't know what's going on. Um, this here is a picture from LOL commits, uh, which takes pictures of you whenever you commit code. This was not actually on the Rick Astley project. This was on the KSP CCAN project. Um, but it sort of demonstrates how I felt about this. So I was very, very happy. Um, when I discovered a wonderful project called Zapper. And um, Zapper is, is basically magic, uh, like all good technology that is sufficiently advanced. It, um, what you do is you write a Flask app. Uh, Python programmers in the audience might have heard of Flask. And um, Zapper does the heavy lifting for you. So rather than you having to like deploy it out and like figure out how everything on, on, on um, Lambda works, you just say, Zapper, please do this for me. So I'm going to show you what the Flask app, Flask app looks like, which I wrote. Um, so here it's like, please give me Flask, set an application name uh, from Twilio, give me the Twimmel stuff that I need. Um, I would have a, I apologize, this is a little bit small, uh, but just an array of all the tunes that I wanted to give people. So all the remixes, um, who they're by, where they came from, what their description is, um, and where you can find the, uh, the music files. And then I, I simply built a, a simple menu. Uh, so welcome to the National Rick Astley Hotline. You may make your selection at any time. Uh, to listen to this by that, please press this number. And then most importantly, the very bottom, uh, to hear these options again, press zero. If you do not wish to be Rickrolled, please hang up now. 
The irony of this is that the menu plays after the first song has finished playing in full. <laughs> so you have already been rickrolled by this point. Although if you press zero, you can skip straight to the menu. Um, I have a few helper functions in there. I have a play tune function. Uh, all it does is it says I'm going to be uh, producing a Twiml response. And this gather section, gather is how we receive key presses. So gather says I want to receive one key press. I want to have a 10 second timeout after I've done everything else. So after it's finished playing the menu, it will wait for 10 seconds. Um, and then it will play whatever URL, which I've given it there, and it will say the menu. So the idea is to play a tune, it plays the tune, it plays the menu afterwards. Any time during that process, any time during those gather commands, you can press a button and it will do whatever's, uh, whatever response is with that button. And it just calls your application again, your Flask application again, it passes through that new selection. Um, the response down the bottom triggers if we time out, uh, if they don't seem to be doing anything, we just hang up on them, we say goodbye. Um, and then this is pretty much the entire application. Uh, we say that, you know, get the digits in here. If there's no selection, then we've just received the phone call. There's no digits pressed. Um, we just play that. Um, if they press zero, then we know that that's our main menu. We play the menu. Um, and otherwise, here comes a remix. We play that remix. Um, the actual Flask application has a little bit more in there. There's some exception handlers in case things go wrong. Uh, there's checking for funny digits like star and hash and everything. But this is more or less the entire code. Um, so before I actually uh, run over to Zappa, let's give this a call to demonstrate that it works. So if I open up my phone, um, I have Rick Astley on speed dial, which is excellent. And I'm going to call up now. Here we go. So there's the song that we all know and love. Also note that static, phone is the worst way to listen to music. This is a terrible idea, but if I hit zero... Welcome to the National Rick Astley Hotline. You may make your selection at any time. To listen to 8-Bit by Kita Kyber, press 1. To listen to Dubstep by Crystallize, press 2. To listen to Daft Punk, press 3. To listen to Avicii by Nils, press 4. To listen to drum and bass by Wave Shapers, press 5. Drum and bass is really good. To listen to EDM by Riot, press 6. And so on and so forth. And if I make a selection, so I'll just hit 4. Wow, it's like the telephone network hits me. so on. <laughs> Looking at the call logs, it's amazing because I will see people who will like call up the Rick Astley hotline and they will stay online for 30 or 40 minutes. It's very clear they're listening to every remix in full and then they're replaying some of them <laughs> over a telephone, which is the worst thing for music. So you've got your Flask application, you've done some testing, how do you actually get it out there? Um, so if you've installed Zapper, uh, so you know pip install Zapper, set up your virtual environment and everything, um, it gives you this huge page of text that's very, very colorful. Um, there is only one real question in there, which is like, have we selected the right defaults? You can just hit enter for yes, and you now have a Zapper application. Um, to, in order to deploy that, uh, you can see there that I've written Zapper deploy production. And so um, this is going to push it out to production, and it's given me an error message there. It's like, hey, you don't have the proper IAM roles. So if you get that, which I did, uh, the way in which you set that up is you uh, set up your AWS credential files. Um, so you need to make sure you have the appropriate credentials so that it can make roles that do the right thing and so on and so forth. So that was the first problem which I hit. Not too hard to, to, to uh, resolve. Um, you can then say, OK, I want to try and zap a deploy production again. And um, you can then run zap a tail to see what's going on. And what I got was this constant list of things down the bottom. I apologize, the screen is a bit small. Unable to import module handler, no module named handler. And I'm like, this is weird. It's, it's working fine locally. Um, I looked at the zip file it was creating. The zip file was absolutely fine. It turns out you can embed Unix permissions inside zip files. And AWS cares about that 
So if you happen to have, I don't know why, if you happen to have a private file inside your zip file, then AWS Lambda can't read it. So chmod the entire directory so that everything's readable, do that again, um, Zapper update production, and it sort of pushes it all up. This is entirely automatic. And at that point, it worked. It actually honestly worked. So it was a little bit of stumbling through that to try and get things working, but it was relatively straightforward. Once you've got it running, there are some quite cool Zapper commands which you can execute. Zapper status shows you uh, everything. It shows you uh, how many versions you've uploaded. You can roll back to previous versions. There's a Zapper rollback command. So you can go, oops, totally messed this up. Go back to the one I had previously. Ideally, you're using development and testing environments as well, so you never hit that. Um, but it's the Rick Astley hotline, so I haven't been that good with, my, uh, uh, with my, my software engineering practices. There have been times where I've had to do rollbacks. What's incredibly useful uh, for seeing what's going on is Zapper Tail. Zapper Tail connects to the Lambda servers, and it shows you all the requests which are being made. Um, I've blanked out a few things here, like people's personal phone numbers and everything. Um, but there's quite a bit of stuff which you can see here. Um, you get things like, where are they calling from? So which country, um, uh, which state are they calling from, which city, if it knows the city. Um, it has all this extra information which is provided there. Um, people don't often realize when they're calling a service that, hey, I've got your phone number now. Um, I've got this other information now. And in fact, if I, if I zip over here, um, you can see that I've got a, a, a log here of everything which is going on. Um, I've been making a few phone calls, and you can see down the bottom it's like state is Southeast Australia, because obviously Victoria is not a state, Southeast Australia is a state. Um, <laughs> but you can see all of this stuff which is coming in. Um, so do consider calling numbers anonymously if you're not sure what that number is. Oops, let me go back to here. So Zapper is seriously cool. Zapper meant that I could skip pretty much the entirety of knowing how all this cloud stuff works, and I could just write Python, um, which was not too hard for me to learn. Um, so what sort of future plans do I have with all of this? Um, well, one thing which I want to do um, is I'd like to have SMS conversations enabled. I haven't done this yet um, because it involves keeping state. And um, what I would like is something where if you give your phone number to a person that you know, you'd rather not have your phone number, uh, either they're a douchebag or they're like a, a company that you don't like or something, um, I wanted to just respond to any messages it receives with Rick Astley lyrics. Um, so you could conceivably have something like this. You know, hey, good to meet you, drinks tomorrow. And um, what I want is it to sort of wait a little bit of time to give you the illusion of being human and come back with, we're no strangers to love. <laughs> And you know, you could imagine, oh yeah, I'm deaf, no stranger. And it's like, you know the rules, and so do I. <laughs> Lol, what rules? A true commitment's what I'm looking for. <laughs> hey babe, we just met. <laughs> you wouldn't get this from any other guy. And, and I almost guarantee that if the person is how I'm imagining in my head, that'd be like, uh, you mean girl, right? So that's one thing which I'd like to add, this ability for it to, to respond to text messages um, and so that I can log those text, message, those, uh, those text messages for my own amusement. <laughs> because I, I would love to be able to give the next version of this talk and say, these are real conversations people have tried to have with this bot. I guarantee that will be fascinating. Um, I also would love to have some sort of a karaoke mode. Um, uh, Twilio has the way to record what a person is saying, record everything on the line whilst something else is playing. Um, so we could say to enter karaoke mode, press star, and then have the person sing along with the Rick Astley song. And if anyone here has been to Mona, there is an art exhibit there, which is a whole bunch of people uh, singing along to Madonna songs. It's absolutely fantastic. It's intended as an interactive uh, exhibit. You should go in there and sing with everyone on the screens. Um, I would love to have the same thing here. If I ever want arts funding, that's the arts funding that I'm going to go for. Um, and of course, the last thing which I want is I've got people's phone numbers. I know when they're calling. I know which people are like the frequent callers. And there are frequent callers to the Rick Astley hotline <laughs> that call back every week. Um, if someone hasn't called for a couple of months, I would like to like send them a single text once only, which says, I'm never going to give you up. And, <laughs> and then never, ever, ever text them again. <laughs> so I've shown you here a, uh, a couple of technologies 
uh, uh, AWS Lambda and Twilio are obviously commercial platforms, um, but all the code which I'm running on them is 100% free and open source software. Zapper is free and open source. I'll be giving you the, uh, the GitHub repository for the Rick Astley hotline in a moment. There's a readme file there, which is essentially quick start instructions, how to set up your own. So if you want to deploy extra Rick Astley hotlines, you can do so. And whilst this may have seemed like it was a silly talk, um, I hope that the information you've learnt can be used for serious work as well, if you actually want to set up a, uh, a serious voice over IP hotline or something. Um, so thank you all very, very much for coming to my talk. Um, I hope that I didn't let you down. <laughs> and uh, may you do good things with Python. Thank you. <laughs>
Any other questions? Katie, Tim? Hold on. <laughs> there you go. So was this the first time you've used Python to achieve something? This was my first time programming in Python. I Yay! wanted... Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I wanted, I wanted to rickroll people so much, I learned Python to do so, yes. <laughs> but I've since used this knowledge for other things, which has been good. Any, Any more other questions? questions? I don't know how we're doing with time. We have plenty of time. Oh, we Up do? To you. Paul, a serious question. Um, you know who rings the service. Has Rick Astley rung it? Not that I'm aware of, uh, but I don't know Rick Astley's personal phone number, so I can't tell. I can tell people in London are calling, but I, unless I call them up and say, hey, who are you? Which, <laughs> which I think is a terrible idea. That, that's, that's version three. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think Twilio does have a function where you can do caller name lookup. So, um, and, and Sam may correct me here or not, but I know that there's a ticky box I can tick to say, do call a name lookup to try and find out if it knows the person's name. Um, I've intentionally left that off. I don't really want to know more about people than I have to. Have you considered making another phone line with Adele's hello? <laughs> <laughs> I think you've just discovered my next project. Uh, there is, so, so there is a, there is two days of hackathon on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, if you want to set up the Adele, national Adele hotline, um, we can do that. <laughs> I suspect I'm just volunteering to add another feature for you, but it's uh, one idea. I'm assuming you can, um, in the code, decide which sample you play based on the information from the call so Absolutely. if they're in uh if they're in the us then you play a different version but i'm also wondering uh, you'd have to store a state um but it, you could then say okay well this person has called and they keep on asking for the dubstep version so i will play the dubstep version as a first option i'll send a patch request Please do, please do. That's, that's fast. On, on the topic of um, knowing where they're calling from, we can absolutely do like localization based upon that as well. So it can be like, oh, based upon the country, like a, rather than like, welcome to the Rick Astley hotline, it's like, g'day mate, you're at the Rick Astley hotline. Like we could do that not based upon the number they're calling, but where they're calling from. I think we have some more I think questions. that's all the time we have. The uh, oh. next session starts at uh, 4.50. Cool. Oh, grab me during the break and I'm happy to answer more questions. Thank you all so much. And <laughs> GitHub repo is up there. Thank you.